Hi, and welcome to another episode of Silicon Minds Human Hearts. For the global AI community, I'm Roland, and I'm here today at GitHub headquarters with Taranjit Singh, the CEO and founder for MEM0. Welcome. Hey, uh, really, thank you for having me here. Excited to be uh, sharing uh, things about MEM0 and like AI with you and everyone. Yeah, excellent. So looking forward to, to our discussion. But first, maybe introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, so I am Taranjit. I'm one of the uh, founders uh, of MEM0. MEM0 is building the memory layer for AI agents and AI apps. We are open source on GitHub with uh, 24,000 plus stars. And developers love us. They use us to build uh, stateful agents. They use us to build agents that adapt to any user over time. Uh, and yeah, before that, I've been, uh, I grew up in India and uh, been like part of some well-known Indian startups, got a chance to move here last year. And since then, I've been building MEM0. Awesome. Because I think you started in, in just software engineering. What got you in AI? Yeah. So I, I mean, my first uh, stint with AI was in 2014. I, in India, in my undergrad college, I built a project project. Uh, which was tokenization for Hindi language. Hindi is the main language in India. And that's how I learned about like basics of natural language processing. And that's how I started. And then in 2016 and 2017, I was working in like machine learning, information retrieval, search and NLP domain. And that's how, and then I also contributed to a popular book in AI. That's how like my journey in AI has been. Uh, I, I was like right on, time when this like chat GPT wave was about to start, uh, left my job right before that only. So got a chance to build uh, a product and a company here. Because when the LLMs came around, it totally revolutionized the entire AI spectrum because natural language processing was hard in yeah. the past. And I'm not saying it's easy, but LLMs totally made it different. What do you think on this? What is your take on this? Yeah, I think uh, I remember like uh, I back in my job, I used to we were building like a search engine for kids uh, and we have to we have to do like so many grammar parsing. We have to do like so many semantic understanding and it was literally like a complicated system and, and still then and it wouldn't cover all the cases. But with LLM, you give it like any text and it would automatically understand like what is being talked about. You can use it to summarize it. You can use it to convert it to any any other language. So with LLM, I think it has become very easy for anyone to uh, give it like any unstructured text or anything and they'll just make sense of it, which is like a very fundamental shift in, I mean, like the current landscape that we have. Yeah, it made a lot of things easy, but it had new problems as well. <laughs> Memory, for instance, was one of them. Yeah. Um, of course, we did a lot of things with Rag, but you build an entire solution around memory. What does Mem0 do? Yeah, so, I mean, we initially were building a, a, a rag framework called Embed Chain. Uh, that was like the simplest framework to, you know, create rag applications for any developer. While building that, uh, we noticed that a lot of our developers, whenever they're building applications using LLM, they are trying to maintain the end user state. So let's say if you're building like a trip planner agent and you're making it live for your users, you would maintain like, oh, for user one, uh, the user is based in San Francisco, user two, maybe they're based in New York, right? So these were like some states that they were trying to maintain. And then it got us thinking like, why is this happening? And we realized that the current LLMs that we have, they are stateless. They, they are there, they understand, they can like give you answers, but they don't maintain this context over time with you. So right now I'm like in GitHub HQ, they don't know this, right? And uh, we then we started going deep in and we realized that this happened because natively they don't have this you know, concept of memory, concept of things and like memory updating over time. So that's why we started building Mem0. Uh, it functions with any LLM, where like you plug in this technology and any, any LLM will become stateful and will try, will like maintain states for anything that you want. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so convenient. But that also, because with software development in the past has been the case, if you have multiple data sources, things can well, almost get out of hand and, and change over time on two different spots. Mm -hmm. Is it does Mem Zero deal with those issues? Yeah. So I mean, like I mean, yeah. So like when we solve this, like it's a hard problem. I mean, we cannot solve it like fully, and like we are trying our best to solve it in the best way possible. But like there are some times where like 
there are like some conflicting states being there so we'll now with the reasoning model also that are there so we're introducing this capability where like we can reason now okay uh taranjit was in github hq but for like only 30 minutes but now he's back to his office so like these are some you know advancements that are happening on the llm side which are also helping us but yeah like different data sources different uh information do come up but we try our best to make sense of it in the best way possible and give you like a accurate representation of the current state and as a user are you able to see your state yes to view your state and to yeah probably not change your state yeah so you you as a user we also build like a cool react component wherein like uh if you're building like a consumer facing application and you want them like a convenient way to expose their memory so we give you like a react component wherein like you can just show all the memories there they have the option to even edit it. so let's say if i deduce that my location is right now san francisco but i can even update it to be very precise that this street in san francisco okay so we, we do that and security wise it is all handled for you you don't have yeah, to yeah yeah you don't have to yeah well that's very good you have some use cases you can share just around how your product is being used yeah i think uh, a lot of uh, i mean we see like a lot of interesting use cases our simple pitch is that whenever you you are using any llm uh, and you want it to remember things about a user or you are building an ai agent and you want it to improve over time you should use mem0 uh we have seen like a lot of use cases like one of them is like some sort of personal ai companion somebody is building like a personal ai productivity companion somebody is building like a personal ai companion for kids so like this is like one vertical where you see like companions and they always have this natural uh, concept of interacting with users so that's where like memory is needed we also see some applications in like healthcare and financial domains where like people are building some sort of like healthcare assistant or some sort of financial assistant and they want to remember things about you like oh you bought this share uh, in the past and now you're thinking to buy it again this is how you can this is your history and then the bigger and another bigger use case that we see is like ai agents so right now like everybody is trying to create an agents and uh, agent have this fundamental problem that they forget things even in the current execution or over time and they don't don't remember like let's say i'm building like a trip planner agent right now and i like airbnb more than hotel i wanted to remember for like the rest of the life that whenever i'm making like asking for like a trip it should automatically give me airbnb and not hotel but what will happen that i mean this this agent will forget now so like if you plug in mem0 there the agent will remember that oh i have to give airbnb to taranjit but to taranjit but to some other person maybe it can be hotel so that is like another big use case for us yeah so then it benefits the more your system is being used the more the user benefits yeah, yeah. and eventually it becomes personalized so let's say you know i like you know i grew up in india so i have like a very natural fond for indian food so now if i'm you know interacting with like some food ai agent the food ai agent will know that taranjit has a natural preference for indian food and it will automatically suggest me uh things because it is my agent it is like getting personalized yeah. with me over time yeah and even past preference if, if you yes. have allergies or something then that could be very helpful as well um and you of course mentioned agents um and if you hear agents then you immediately think autonomous agents or at least i i do to me that is a, a cool very cool aspect of of using these agents how do you feel how can we balance the 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 autonomous agents with um with human oversight i think uh, i think like i i mean i i mean i see agent more like a baby growing up uh, when like baby will learn things on the fly and then will you know understand it and use so let's say if the baby make mistakes right now maybe like the parents will you know give instructions or correct the mistake and then the baby will next time understand that oh i don't have to do this right so that's how i think like you know i mean the concept like the autonomous agent also uh, though they are autonomous in a way but uh, right now the technology is not there yet when like we can give them full control to do things so like right now we we see like a lot of agents in the market which are market which are like taking which are not taking action or which are taking action which is like not harmful so like i i was reading through this like voice agent example where like people are using voice agents to take calls which are like outside their business hours or take calls which are like low you know low ticket size like where the uh, impact is there so i think right now i mean like when we are seeing this adoption people are trying to uh, people want to you know offload things but they have this you know na- they have this natural mindset that it can go any other side also we see like we saw like some customer support example in like airlines also 
so i think like that's how it is but uh, uh, this is like a very fundamental you know concept here wherein i think like more and more innovation will come up and we'll see like uh, how will the control go from like an autonomous agent to a human and to back and maybe this control also learns that okay this was the first time wherein i have to post something on linkedin and i was stuck here because i was not aware of this but the human helped me complete this and next time it remembers and maybe next time it is automatically able to proceed like one step ahead of it so that also learning is there yeah so this is now what we're the agents what we're dealing with with the we're still learning ourselves how these agents should behave yeah. where do you see this going in like three years three to five years i think i mean one thing that we at mem0 uh, are very excited about is like i think right now everything around us is like very reactive so let's say if you have if i have to text my mom uh, maybe like you know how is she doing i'll pick up my phone and you know i'll just open whatsapp and i'll just text her i feel like or maybe let's say you know i have to you know maybe like ask uh, on our companies like like what's the plan for lunch and it's like daily at like 12:30 we go for like lunch right so like this is so reactive i think like one thing that i feel strongly will happen is like technology the way we experience internet and ai will make it more proactive so instead of me picking up my phone and like sending a slack message to my teammates that hey let's go for lunch uh what might happen is like this proactiveness will automatically you know compose a message for me it it might they might it might be the possibility that the message is already sent right so i feel like the proactiveness part will come up where like the technology is making me like let's say i have to come to uh you know here I have to come here today so i automatically receive like a very you know personalized reminder that you know you should leave now otherwise you will get late so that will happen and the other thing that we feel and are working towards is like we feel like the way we experience internet right now is like very static uh, i mean i am not a uh, maybe like i don't like uh, using mouse much i like using keyboard much and maybe like the websites are not built for me in that way or like the ui that i see let's say doordash like i order like you know a fixed set of food items maybe like per week right so why doesn't the ui automatically updates with respect to me so we feel like the uh i mean the internet and the internet experience will become super personalized or like hyper personalized to an individual i might see doordash in a different way and you might see doordash in a different way so i mean like the i mean i think like the next wave is uh next wave or next uh step uh, on the ladder where we are headed is like ai i mean the internet becoming proactive internet became becoming hyper personalized to me and that's what like we are very excited that imagine that i just don't have to open slack and type something it is automatically there and things are getting automated and we just leave for lunch yeah yeah it will also certainly help in in our day to day lives but isn't there also then the risk of um almost those choices being made for you without you even realizing them for instance if you had the restaurant example if you look at hotels if you always pick the one brand of hotel at one point the assistant or the agent will will not ask you anymore it will just book that certain brand of hotel yeah um and that will do this or, or the the top reviewed item on your list that will do something to businesses and how they will interact with customers and on the internet is is it something you are taking to account for mem0 as well yeah i think uh, so i call this the randomness effect where like humans as humans like we are also autonomous agent right i can do things on my own but i have this random concept of maybe let's say if i have been eating like indian food for like 5 days straight the sixth day i might i might order like some salad right so i have this randomness concept in me i think the ai in the ai uh, wave right now or in the ai era right now we haven't seen this concept coming up in the llms have started reasoning that they'll explain like why they are taking particular action but they don't have this randomness concept right now so there might be a possibility where like you know uh when we you know when we imagine this future obviously like we might have like uh, i mean like ai is automatically making choices for me but i think i'm fine as long as it is making my life more convenient and it is making me uh, i mean it is making me productive save time because like there are certain things which i feel like i'll most likely do it that way only i won't change and then i think like one other thing is like if i change then there is like some trigger that happens maybe like today i'm not in the mood to eat like indian food because maybe i just want to try something new right so there is like trigger element right so i think if we can somehow pass that trigger also to ai 
I think they can also understand. So like I think I understand that there is like that uh, thing there, but I think with time it will get solved. As long as we're still our autonomous agents. Yeah, we can always interrupt it, right? We can always say that, okay, uh, you thought that I should eat like this food today. I'm not in the mood. I'll cancel it. I'll just interrupt you. You always have the option to go and interrupt it. Yeah, it's so fun that these LLMs are tend to surprise us yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Um, I had that yesterday with O1, just uh, actually being surprised with itself when it um, the prompt I gave it was he, he thought it wouldn't pass his guidelines and then he he reasoned on it and it still passed it and he was surprised himself. Wow. What was your, your moment of, of the last few months that you were pleasantly surprised by me? I think I was like surprised with the new with this Owen like thing, like the new paradigm. I was like, you know, wow, this is like now uh, we can understand like why, you know, things are happening that way. And then the uh, other thing that surprised me was like deep seek where like they exposed the entire chain of thought. So now I could see like what exactly is happening. And I think one of the ways that we as human learn is by understanding like how have you or ha how has the other person made a choice and if I can just go and introspect okay thus let's say like you know Paul Paul Graham wrote like some blog post and I can just put that blog post and I can reason and I can get the reasoning of oh Paul is thinking like this in this paragraph in this like this imagine like what I mean I will get like I think like that's like a big unlock for everyone within like you can now understand that how people think how people write and then you can use that to learn and get better. So I think like that, that was also like another moment for me wherein like I was like very much uh, surprised and happy that this happened. Yeah, so good. Yeah. And a question that we ask, uh, try to ask everyone, um, well, how has AI impacted your day-to-day -day life? So your work life, that is clear. You, you build an entire company around around AI, right? Yeah. But how do you, what is your favorite AI service that you use in your personal life? I think, uh, I mean, to me, I mean, I am like, you know, I've, I mean, I use like right now chat GPT perplexity also to a certain extent in my day to day life. I use mid journey for all the AI work uh, and I use it to be, uh, you know, more uh, like, let's say like I'm writing something and I'm not sure like will this, you know, this does this message hits the tone of the current email or not. So I use it for that. But for me, the biggest unlock that I'm seeing is in my mother's life wherein like uh, she's in India right now and I've just told her about chat GPT and I think she is hooked like you know uh, I mean my brother was applying for some internships and I think uh, he was not uh, writing like a proper email I don't know how and my why like my mom ended up but she like somehow you know played around with chat GPT and like she was able to compose like a very good email and now I think like she is like super hooked to chat GPT like uh, instead of asking me for something she'll first ask chat GPT uh, and I think that's like a very uh, big productivity unlock also that I see in her life and she's now, you know, I think she's also learning more and more about things. So like she's trying to read more about history of our religion, history of some aspects in history in India. So now she'll just, you know, interact with chat GPT as like another uh, human and like just, you know, get things done. So like I see, I mean, in personal life, if you talk about, I think like that's the biggest unlock that I'm seeing in my uh, parents' life. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it made it so easy to yeah. just to absorb all the knowledge that is out there. Yeah. Now, perfect. Well, thank you so much for being with us. It was a very nice discussion. Um, I hope to see so much more for you in the future. I'll definitely check out Memzero uh, in the future again. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice. Thank you for having me. Like, loved it. Uh, super great. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.